Good morning, friends in Christ. We're glad that you're joining us on this Monday for our Mount Olive Live Facebook devotions. And so good morning. This morning, we're looking at questions that they asked Jesus. And so we're going to ask you to take out your Bibles and turn to Luke chapter 10. And so good morning. As we take out our Bibles this morning and spend time in the Word, of God together. We're looking at Luke chapter 10. And so we have the four gospels that begin the New Testament that talk about the life, the death, and the resurrection of Jesus, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And so we're going to turn to Luke chapter 10 today as we look at questions that they asked Jesus. And the gospel of Luke, Luke is a doctor. He's a Gentile. And so the aim of his gospel is for the Gentiles to come and to know that Jesus is Lord. And as a physician, Luke did a lot of interviews, and he wanted the evidence to make sure that Jesus was the real deal. And when he looked at the evidence, he came to that conclusion that, yep, I'm giving my life to Christ and for Christ. And so in Luke chapter 10 today, we're going to see some good friends of Jesus with Mary and Martha. And what we realize about these two sisters is that they are wired much differently. You know, we have three children and each child is totally different, right? And so we can relate to that. And so Mary and Martha. And so some have described them as a soaker and a scrubber. And so if you make a plate of brownies and you have the dish you know with the little remains of the brownies stuck to the pan there is the scrubber who immediately has to scrub that stuff off in the sink and then there is the soaker the person who puts the water in the soap in and leaves it stay there in the sink and so Martha is known as the scrubber she is a person who has to work and she is a doer she's not a stewer and then Mary is no more for the soaker of being the one who sits at the feet of Jesus. And what we're going to see today is that in the midst of this little bantering between the two sisters, both wired differently, that Martha is going to ask Jesus a question and to want to bring him into the drama. And so counselors would call this the drama triangle. And so if you draw a triangle on the top, you have persecutor. On the one side, you have the victim. And the other side, you have the rescuer. And so we're going to see Martha being that persecutor as she's going to be talking about Mary, who's the victim. And she's going to want Jesus, Martha is, to come in and to rescue the situation. And what we see is that (coughs) Jesus is too wise to be a part of the drama triangle. And we're going to see his wisdom and discernment on how he answers the question of what he has asked today. We look at Luke chapter 10, beginning at verse 38. Now, as they went on their way, Jesus entered a village and a woman named Martha welcomed him into her house. And she had a sister called Mary who sat at the Lord's feet and listened to his teaching. And so Martha welcomes Jesus in. Hospitality is huge in first culture, first century Judaism. And so that is a big important factor here is hospitality is huge in that culture. And so um, Martha welcomes him in and Mary, she is going to just sit at the feet of Jesus. She's going to be all about Jesus and listening and taking as much of what he has to offer in. And so that sets up the stage. Then we see here verse 40, but Martha was what? Martha was distracted with much serving. She didn't like to sit still. She didn't like to be at the foot of Jesus. Her love language was acts of service. And that is what she loves to do. But she is distracted that the serving and the things that she wants to get done and the vision she has to make that a reality to give Jesus the best stay is all wrapped up in the things to do instead of the quality time with Jesus. And so we can see Martha here, acts of service. 
and we can see Mary here with quality time. She's going to be all about the relationship with Jesus. But Martha was distracted with much serving, and she went up to him, and she asked Jesus this question. She says, Lord, do you not care that my sister has left me to serve and to do the work all alone? Tell her then to help me. We see here that Martha is not afraid of conflict, and she's not afraid of bringing other people into the drama triangle because she, the way that she asked that question and what she asked for, she is bold in her communication. First, the boldness of that statement, Lord, do you not care? There's already a judgment and assumption there, right? Do you not care that my sister has left me to do all the work to serve all alone? And then she not only brings it up, tries to draw him in, she then is going to be bold enough to tell him what to do. Tell her then to help me. But the Lord answered her, Martha, Martha, you are anxious and troubled about many things, but one thing is necessary. Mary has chosen the good portion, which will not be taken away from her. Look at how Jesus answers the question. He doesn't take the bait. He's not going to get into the drama. And instead, he calls it out for what it is. And so he gets her attention by doubling down on her name, Martha, Martha. And so we have probably experienced this sometime in our life. For me, it was Lance Marcus. When grandma or mom or dad would say first name and middle name, you knew that they wanted your attention, right? Right? And so Jesus doubles down, Martha, Martha. He's saying, look at me. Listen to what I'm about to tell you. And then he goes on to say, you are anxious and troubled. You're worried about many things, all of the details. That's not what's most important here. I'm not worried about that. That's not what I'm here. I'm not here to be the clean house cop or to look and to judge all the different things that you're doing for me and your hospitality and what the place looks like and all the different things that you're doing for me. That's not why I'm here. I'm here to spend time with you. And so that is why Mary has chosen the good portion that will not be taken from her, that that quality time is important. And what we realize in life is that we need the Marys and the Marthas of the world, right? That there is something about serving the Lord and that that is a love language, but there's also something about that quality time. And that's what makes the world go round, is that we have the Mary and Marthas of the world. People who care about the details and how things look and getting things done, but also people who care about relationships. And notice, it's not that she is serving that she gets reprimanded for. It's how she talked to Jesus and tried to do that to her sister that Jesus was not going to allow that to happen. He was not going to get into that drama. And so you're not going to judge or assume or put your sister down. That's not what we're about here. What we're about is coming together. And there is a way to ask somebody when you need help versus making a judgment and bringing somebody else into the drama and telling them to do that work for them. And so Jesus is extremely wise in all areas of life. He's true man, true God, but also extremely wise in how he handles relationships and how he handles communication with people. And to say, Martha, Martha, why do you worry about all these things? These things are not what's important. What's important is me. The Messiah, the Savior of the world, is here to spend time with you. And... When it comes to the priorities, it's not that serving and details aren't important, but what's the most important? The most important is focusing on Jesus and that he is the top priority. And so today we see the wisdom of how Jesus interacts with Mary and Martha and how he stays focused. What was Martha's problem? You are distracted about many things. So many things the devil tries to use in our day-to-day -day life to get our eyes off of Jesus and what life is truly about, to be distracted by many things. And it's so easy to then be critical, to be negative, and to fall into drama. And so it's so important for us to be focused daily 
and daily reminders of what's most important, to keep the main thing the main thing. And the main thing is Jesus Christ. And he tells us what's most important, our relationship with him, love the Lord your God with all your heart, your soul, your strength and mind, and love your neighbor as you love yourself. That that is what is most important. Work's important, but it's not the most important. When we look at priorities, it's God, it's marriage, it's family, it's kids, before we get to job and other hobbies and interests. And so it's important to remember what the priority is truly all about. And the top priority in our life that shapes everything else, our work and our relationships, is keeping Jesus at the center and keeping him first and foremost. That when this relationship is right, then these relationships are right. And so that is what is crucially important that we learn today, that Jesus is to be the main thing. And let's keep the main thing the main thing, not allow the devil to get us distracted about the worries and the things of this world. We bow our heads to pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, on this Monday, we're thankful for just the wonderful lesson as we begin this week focused on you. Lord, we can worry and be anxious and fearful about many things, but the most important thing is you are the answer to those worries and to those fears. You are our top priority. Help us to focus on you, Lord, and to keep the main thing the main thing. Keep the evil one away from us and don't allow him to tempt us to take our eyes off of what is most important. And that's your vision and mission for our life, to build believers, to reach out and connect people to Jesus. And all God's people said, amen. Friends in Christ, have a blessed Monday as you stay focused and not distracted on keeping Jesus your top priority.